All right, we'll go ahead and call to order the September 10th, 2020 meeting of the Valley County Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, Cinda, can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Batten? Uh, here. Thompson? Here. Cooper? Here. DeFort? Here. And Commissioner Freeman has been excused. All right, and before we get started, we'll just uh, make a note that this meeting is held slightly differently because of the emergency order declared by the governor back in March um, due to COVID-19. So we are videotaping this meeting and live streaming it on YouTube, and we have a phone that people can call into if they wish to uh, place a public comment. Um, we have a socially distanced audience, and we, our commissioners, are social distanced as well. Um, all right, with that, we will go ahead and move on to the first item on the agenda, and that is the minutes from the August 13th meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? I have. Yes. All right, any changes or corrections? No. All right, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as written. I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next we move on to old business. Uh, the first item is CUP 20-13, Ted's Place. Uh, this has been postponed from the August 13th meeting. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there any ex parte or conflict of interest? No. No. No? no. Hearing none, uh, Cinda, can we please have a staff report? Hey, the staff report for CUP 20-13, Ted's Place. The applicants are Theodore and Sherry Saradnicek. The property is 217 Wildwood Drive and the Amity Wagon Wheel Subdivision Number 6, Lot 7, Block 7. Uh, Theodore and Sherry Saradnicek are requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a recreational vehicle campground to allow four RVs to use the dwellings for more than 30 days in duration. The campsite will be for personal use and will not have any commercial use. The RVs are used by the owner and their daughter in two times. There is an individual well, central sewer, and electrical power. A storage shed is on the property. The existing driveway across access is from Wildwood Drive of Public Road. Application was made to find in zoning on June 22, 2020. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on July 23rd and 30th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on July 9th. Neighbors within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheets sent July 20th. The notice and application were posted online on July 9th. Due to the wrong site being posted in August, the hearing was postponed to September 10th. Legal notice was again posted in the Star News on August 20th and 27th, and the site was posted again on August 26th. Agency comments received. Central District Health has no objection if sewage waste will be discharged to sewer. If proposing discharge to the existing septic system and accessory use authorization from Central District Health will be required. Just as Ellis, Donnelly Fire, state requirements for open burning, fire rings, and vegetation control. Neighbor comments received. Paul Dodge of Down Home LLC owns 215 Wildwood Drive adjacent to the subject property. He has no objections to the proposal. The site is relatively flat. Um, it's surrounded by single-family subdivision and residential uses. It's categorized under four private recreation uses, E, campgrounds and facilities, including tent camps. And I listed the different parts of Title IX for your review. Staff's compatibility rating was a positive eight. Um, and I recommended that each P&Z commissioner do their own compatibility rating prior to the meeting. Uh, there are definitions for the recreational vehicle camp listed for your perusal. The commission should determine if the mitigation of trees and placement of bargain B should allow for the setbacks to be the same as residential or as the private recreational campground. On August 13, 2020, for a similar application, the commission determined the single family residential setbacks are to be used. Um, proposed conditions of approval, if you choose to approve this, are as follows. One, the application, the staff report, and the provisions of the land use and development ordinance are all made a part of this permit, as if written in full herein. Two, any change in the nature or scope of land use activities to require an additional conditional use permit. 
Three, the use shall be established within one year of the date of approval. Four, the issuance of this permit and these conditions will not relieve the applicant from complying with applicable county, state, or federal laws or regulations, or be construed as permission to operate in violation of the statute or regulation. Violation of these laws, regulations, or rules may be grounds for application of the conditional use permit or grounds for suspension of the conditional use permit. Five, all lights should be fully shielded so that there is no upward or horizontal projection of lights. Six, shall have a fire extinguisher handy near the fire pit. Fire pit shall not be within the setbacks. Seven, cannot park in the public right of way or in setback areas. Eight, shall mark property lines. Nine, shall not rent site or RVs. Ten, all guests shall park on site. Eleven, setbacks 20 feet from the front and rear property lines, seven and a half feet on both sides. No other uses shall be in the setback area. And I've received no additional correspondence since the staff report was completed. And that ends my staff report. Thank you, Cinda. Is there any questions of staff? I have none. I have none. All right. Uh, at this time, we would hear a presentation from the applicant. So you can come up to the podium here, sir. And if you want to state your name and address, right just for the record. Yep. And yeah. then... Theodore Zerod, the check. Uh, live in Napa, Idaho, 9676 Robinson. I couldn't hear very well back there. So uh, what question do you have for me? Well, I don't think we have any questions. We're just, maybe if you could give us a little bit of an explanation on uh, what, what you're presenting to us. Okay. <clears throat> We've owned that property for 45 years. Okay. We went through the bark beetles, destroyed all our trees. And now the trees have come up and uh, we keep it manicured. It's beautiful compared to what we see around the other places here. And we got a permit for the sewer. We have four hookups. That's what uh, they told us we could have. We have uh, electricity to each uh, RV, separate electricity. They have a receptacle to plug in. And we have a well. And the water is uh, put in the RVs, and we use the RV pump to use the water. So, am I? We have one RV. My son has one. Others two have sons have one, and my daughter and son-in-law have one. So that's four. So my understanding was that we could have four when we put in the electricity and the sewer and everything else. So. Uh, I'd like to know what the purpose of this is. It, we want to cut us down to three. What What's the purpose? Want to answer that? Yeah. Um, I'll give you a little bit of clarification on that. We have established this ordinance in Valley County because there are several places where people bring RVs and pack a lot completely full. And there's a lot of neighborhood complaints. It's a drain on resources. It's an eyesore. It's a danger to the roadway. And so we've created this ordinance to kind of mitigate some of those implications, but we put in this provision so that you can come in and apply for this permit and still be able to bring your RV as long as you're a responsible neighbor, which by the looks of your application and the sound of your testimony, it seems like you've done all the things that you need to do. Okay, the RVs come up about the middle of May and I'm taking mine home tomorrow. Starting to freeze up here, so they're not here very long. And they're taking theirs home also, so we'll be gone. Okay. And it's a family deal, really. And I, I can't tell I can't tell which son in law or daughter or son to take the trailer out. It's gonna be hard to do that. I don't think I'll be able to. So I'd like to have this application approved. That's good. Any questions of the applicant? I don't. I think it's pretty straightforward in my opinion. The only question I, I had might be, how do you dispose of your, your garbage? I mean, do you haul it home in a bag? Yeah. That's the only question I had. All right, you said that you're hooked up to sewer. Are you hooked yes. up to the North Lake sewer or do yes. you have a septic? $24 a month year round, whether I use it or not. Okay. Perfect. And they have four hookups there for mm -hmm. you on site. Okay. And a clean out. Um, and then you, did you say there was a fire? Fire ring, yes, fire for ring a campfire. Mm -hmm. um, 
And is that, let's see, where is that on your site plan? I saw that you have provided the site I, it plan. Should, you should be able to see it right there. Oh, I see yeah. it right there. Okay. okay, and right across from the well. Okay, perfect. It's about 10 feet away from the well, maybe nine. How far from the property line? From the property line? Yeah. So, let me see. I don't know. It's about um, 12, 13 feet. From the side property line? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is not I didn't the measure it. I didn't know. I would have measured it if I'd known I had, you wanted me to, but stepping it off, yeah, okay. Because the trailers are seven, over seven and a half feet from the property line. Okay. And it's sitting off. And then the well is straight across from it. So if we ever had a problem, you just, and I just put in a new pump. It pumps uh, 15 gallons a minute. And I could put out any fire that we needed to put out. Perfect. The one of the applications we heard last month, the fire pit was within the setback. And so that's the only reason I asked the question. Uh -huh. Hey, any other questions? All right. Thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When would we know about this? Well, uh, we'll see if there's anybody here to testify. And if there's not, we'll close the public hearing and we'll vote tonight. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So hopefully in just a few minutes. So we're we're going to go. Okay. You're welcome to stay until we close the public hearing. It won't be very long. It won't be very long. No. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, is there anyone here who which wishes to speak on behalf of the application as a proponent? Go ahead, sir. I, I'm the son-in-law. If you could come up to the microphone and just state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Blaine Grove, uh, 2122 South Secretariat Way, Nampa, Idaho. Um, we, uh, around, the, around the well, uh, about a three-quarter ring was put with with uh, uh, rock, uh, what do you call it? Pavers mm -hmm. and built up and then around, we put up three high pavers around the uh, fire pit. It also has a, what do you call a quarter inch steel uh, uh, thing that co mine uh, cover that covers the, the, the fire pit. And it actually has a, a Anyway, it's, it, it shuts the fire off. So when we, when we go to bed at night, we put that over it and the fire goes out completely. So okay. we used to have to, you know, put water on it. And now we just put that thing on it. It cuts the oxygen and kill, kills the fire right away. So okay. let's, that's all I had to say. Thank you. All right. Are there any other proponents who would like to speak? Are there any proponents on the phone who would like to speak? Okay, hearing none and seeing none, are there any undecideds who would like to speak? Either in person or on the phone? Hearing none and seeing none, are there any opponents who would like to speak? Either in person or on the phone? All right, hearing and seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it to the table for discussion. I see no problems with this. This is in fact probably one of the better ones that have come across our, our table here as far as how he's got things placed, what he's done to his place. Uh, I have no issues with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the same way as Ray. It's, uh, it looks like he's really caught his feet and dotted his eyes. I like that the idea of the cover going over the fire pit, the fire rain, um, as well as within the parameters that we said. I, I think it's, uh, I'm, I've got no problems whatsoever. Right, I agree. I think this is a responsible use of the land. Neil, do you have any comments? Nope, she gave me a stack of stuff yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Well, feel so I'm free, listening a lot today. feel free to ask questions about oh, any procedural know. things. I'm you need to. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, then I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the, uh, get my thing out of here. I'll make a motion to accept the conditional use permit application number 20-13, Ted's place. All right. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There is a 10-day appeal period if 
you do not like our decision, you can appeal it to the Board of County Commissioners. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See, aren't you glad you stuck you around? You understand it was approved, right? Yes. Was that? You understand it was approved? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure you understood that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. Alrighty, the next item of business is CUP 20-15 Brutesman Lodge, and this application has been withdrawn by the applicant. So at this time, we'll move on to new business. Uh, the first one is CUP 20-21 Coleman's RV site. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there any ex parte or conflict of interest? No. 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 All right, hearing none. Cinda, can we please have a staff report? The staff report for conditional use permit application 20-21, Coleman's RV site. The applicant is Trent and Kim Coleman. The site is in the southwest-northwest section of 34, Township 16 North Frame 3 East at 12720 East Smoky Drive. Trent and Kim Coleman are requesting approval of a conditional use permit for a recreational vehicle campground to allow five RVs to be used as dwellings for more than 30 days in duration. The campsite will be for personal use and will not have any commercial use. There is an individual well and electrical power. Water is also stored in the RVs. Sewage waste disposal is by self-contained RVs. There is a fire pit. There are two storage sheds and a pump house are on the property. Access is from Smoky Drive on Public Road. The property owners have posted a blue street sign at driveway entrance that says Kimberly Lane. This is a driveway, not an officially named road. There already is a Kimberly Way in Grattan Barnard subdivision number two. Regardless of whether this is approved or not, the sign needs to be moved to the interior for light where it cannot be seen from the road. Findings, application was made to planning and zoning on July 6, 2020. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on August 20th and 27th. Potentially effective agencies were notified on August 5th. Neighbors within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheet sent August 5th. The notice and application were posted online on August 5th, and the site was posted on August 26th. Agency comments received. Central District Health has no objection. Donnelly Rural Fire Protection District listed the following requirements. All fire rings shall be no larger than two feet in diameter. It shall have a 10-foot diameter of non-combustible materials around the pit. Weeds, grass, vines, and other growth that is capable of being ignited and endangered the property shall be cut down and removed. Recreational fires shall not be conducted within 26, 26 feet of a structure or combustible material. Open burning, bonfires, recreational fires, and use of portable outdoor fireplaces shall be constantly attended until the fire is extinguished. A minimum of one portable fire extinguisher or other approved on-site fire extinguishing equipment such as dirt, sand, water barrel, garden hose, or water truck shall be available for immediate utilization. Closed burning season is May 10th to August 20th. Neighbor comments received none. Physical characteristics of the site is relatively flat. Um, on the north, south, and west is single family residential subdivision. East is uh, Bureau of Reclamation. The proposal is categorized under four private recreation uses, e campground facilities, including tent camps. Um, listed different areas of Title IX for your review. Task compatibility rating was a positive 17. Um, I do recommend the Planning and Zoning Commission to do their own compatibility rating for each one of these applications. Just a different definitions here. Um, discussed setbacks are measured for buildings. RVs are not buildings. Um, Commission should determine if the mitigation of trees, replacement of the RV should be allowed for the setbacks to be the same as for residential or as private recreation campground. Um, so it would be 20 feet from the front, rear side street, and seven and a half from the side. And that is the decision that you had made on August 13th that I carried through to this application. Proposed conditions of approval are as follows. One, the application, staff report, and the provisions of land use and development ordinance are all made a part of this permit as if written in full here in. Two, any change in the nature or scope of land use activity shall require an additional conditional use permit. Three, you shall be established within one year of the date of approval. Four, the issues of this permit, these conditions will not relieve the applicant from complying with applicable county, state, or federal laws or regulations 
or be construed as permission to operate in violation of these statute or regulations. Violation of these laws, regulations, or rules may be grounds for revocation of the conditional use permit or grounds for suspension of the conditional use permit. Five, all lights should be fully shielded so that there is no upward or horizontal projection of lights. Six, shall have a fire extinguisher stored near the fire pit. Fire pit shall not be within setbacks. Seven, shall not park in the public right of way or in setback areas. Eight, shall not rent site or RVs. Nine, all guests shall park on site. Ten, setbacks are 20 feet from the front and rear property line seven and a half from both sides. And 11, shall remove the blue sign at the drive point entrance that says Kimberly Lane. Um, I've received no additional correspondence since the staff report was completed. So that ends my staff report. Are there any questions of staff? No, I do not. I have none. Cinda, isn't the setback on uh, Bureau land seven and a half feet? Yes. So the rear in this case should be seven and a half feet also, not 20? Yes. Good catch. Okay, just checking. Um, all right, any other questions of staff? No. All right, at this time we'd hear a presentation from the applicant. Can I take this off? Yes, you may. And you could state your name and address for the record, please. You know my home address or the address we're talking about? Doesn't matter. Uh, Trent Coleman, uh, 2966 Northwest 3rd Street in Meridian, Idaho. Um, I'm the husband. Uh, my wife has li uh, played on that property since she was seven years old. Her grandparents owned the lots across the street. So uh, when the opportunity came to purchase that five acres, uh, I jumped all over it and uh, have spent the last eight years building um, someplace for my, my family to come and play um, and recreate. Uh, three of the campers on the property are mine. Um, they're registered to me. And they're the first camper we ever had, the second camper we ever had, and I just bought my wife a new one. The other one is my brother-in-law's, and one is um, my niece and nephew's. So um, I don't like traveling up and down Highway 55 with more or anything more than I got it. So uh, we leave it, uh, bring it in May, and uh, head it. Everything starts going home about October starts freezing getting cold. So uh, we have a well, there's water to all the campers. They're self-contained. Uh, they go and dump at Siskra uh, when it's when they need to be dumped. Um, and fire extinguisher is not a problem. It's already there. Uh, fire pit, they said they wanted it three feet in diameter. Um, it's a rock crushing cone that weighs 1300 pounds. I don't know that I could move it if I had to but we don't certainly have bonfires by any, any stretch. So um, there's hoses in three locations if fire got out of the way, but we don't have, we don't have big tall fires. So uh, I'm the one that cuts and splits all the firewood. So um, I, I don't like doing it any more than I have to. So I keep the fire down a little bit actually. Um, there's a road all the way through the property. Um, our setbacks are clearly stated. Um, and there's three sheds because that's kind of a hobby. I like building. They're old rustic looking kind of sheds and um, we don't park. We're quiet. Um, I don't know what else you want to know. So the, the cone where you put the fires, that's less than the three and a half feet in diameter? Yeah. Okay, but the the fire pit on the diagram here says it's about six feet wide. So is that like the cleared area? Yeah, it's probably more like 10 foot. My, my wife did a fantastic job with this map, but it, it's probably more 10 to 15 feet. I okay. can get you an actual measurement of what the cleared, and that's all rock. Um, and then we keep everything mowed down uh, so we don't have tall grass even for that. Since I'm already asking, I'm going to keep going. Go um, so you're, you say that you take the campers over to the Siskra campground to dump. To dump. Mm -hmm. You do both gray and black water yes. there? Okay. Yes. No gray water is discharged on site? No. Okay. Um, anyone else have questions of the applicant? I don't at this time, no. You have a 
power on site? I do, 400 amps. You got a well? I do have a well, yes, sir. Any other questions? Um, I have no questions for the applicant. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, at this time, we would hear from any proponents who would like to speak on behalf of this application, either in the audience or on the phone. Hearing and seeing none, is there any undecided who would like to speak, either in the audience or on the phone? Also, hearing and seeing none, is there any opposed who would like to speak? In person or on the phone? All righty, also seeing none. Uh, we will go ahead and close the public hearing at this time and bring it to the table for discussion. Well, as I said in the last application, I really see no problems with this. Uh, his wife did a really good job on the map. <laughs> Uh, he's met all the setbacks. Uh, he's answered all our questions as far as dumping the trailers, the gray water and, and the black water. Uh, nothing there jumps out at me on it. It looks good. Oh, we forgot to ask about leaving the sign. Well, technically the public hearing is closed. Well, the, it's, it's a condition. the conditions of approval. Right. So just... You'll comply with moving the sign, or he will. We're not sorry. Yeah. So it's not a real sign. It's, it's not reflective, but I will more than happily. Thank you. That's how my wife found out we now own the property. I put the sign up. All right. Okay. Any other discussion? I have none. I agree with Ray on it. I'm looking at his pictures. It's well maintained. He's got the vegetation around the camp area itself, uh, well under control of the mode. And the appear to be uh, fire ring where it's located, that's not gonna be an issue. So I'm, I, I'm fine with it. I'm, yeah, I, I'm real fine with it. It's nice to have a few of these under our belt that show a good example of what we'd like these to look like. Yeah, there was that one two meetings ago or so that uh, if nothing was really in compliance. Right. Like everything was, they were parking in the easement and they were doing, and this is, I think this is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just what we want these to look like. Yeah. And, you know, and it was the property owner's responsibility and, and they had taken on, you know, Quite a responsibility to, to you know, kind of fireproof the property and make it look neat and tidy. Yeah. And you know, that's really what we want to see. And it's fenced, which is kind of nice. It gives it a little bit more ambiance when you look at the property. But no, I have absolutely no objections to this one at all. All righty. Um, I would entertain a motion. I will make a motion to approve. Condition of use permit application number 20 21. Did we fix that one condition of approval with the setback? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 with the conditions condition of, approval of approval as stated. Yeah. All right. It's been moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There is a 10-day appeal period. If you do not like our decision, you can appeal it to the Board of County Commissioners. Perfect. Thank, All right. you. Thank you. Do we need to send a picture of the son being gone? No, okay. no, no. actually. We'll check. If, if he just moves it off the street, even if you want to put it on the fence post, okay. you know, just something like that. that. It looks official it looks the way official. it is. Um, it needs yeah, to look yeah, less official. Not, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be moved once. Thank you. Have a good okay. night. Thank okay. you for Thank coming. You. All right. <laughs> Next item of business, uh, CUP 20-22, Chappie's Sawmill and Woodwork. Woodworks. Uh, is there any ex parte or conflict of interest? No. No. 
right, hearing none, Cindy, can you please have a staff report? Okay, the staff report for traditional use permit application number 20-22, Chaffee Sawmill and Woodworks. The applicant is Michael Chapman. The 1.4 acre site is addressed at 100 and 102 East Prospector Drive in Gold Dust Ranch 2, lots 223 and 224. Mike Chapman is requesting approval for a small sawmill and woodworking business. The existing sawmill is approximately 22 feet in length and is portable. The sawmill has a 9.5 horsepower motor, no louder than the lawnmower. A house, shop, and storage building are also on the property. The site is served by an individual well and individual septic system. There are existing trees between the sawmill and the road and the adjacent neighbors. There will be no large logging trucks or traffic. Access is from East Prospector Drive, a public road. In 2015, CP 15-10, Powell Timber Sawmill was approved in a single-family residential subdivision. The permit is set to expire after five years unless a new permit is obtained. The use was not allowed to expand outside of the previously established boundaries and was not transferable. A variance requirement was discussed but was determined that the conditions placed would be adequate to mitigate impacts into the future. And we attach that, and that's just for some historical perspective of previous scenes. Okay, findings, application of major planning and zoning on August 3rd, 2020. Legal notice was posted in the Star News on August 20th and 27th. Potentially affected agencies were notified on August 5th. Neighbors within 300 feet of the property line were notified by fact sheets on August 5th. The site was posted on August 26th. The notice and application were posted online and on August 4th. Agency comments received. Central District Health has no objections to the proposal. Neighbor comments received. The application included signatures from nearby property owners stating that the operation of a small sawmill business would not impact their life. And those were received from Chad Law, Patrick Morrison, Marty Meyer, Douglas Moore, Terry Brown, Sid Plummer, Denise Wood, and Barb Waller. And I attached a map to this that showed where each one of those uh, residences are located in comparison to this site. Mm -hmm. The physical characteristics of the site is relatively flat. Surrounding land use and zoning is single family residential. Uh, the proposal is categorized under six industrial uses B, heavy industry, five lumber mill. And I listed different portions of the ordinance here for your review. Staff compatibility rating is positive three. Applying the zoning commission should do their own compatibility rating prior to the reading. Staff questions or comments. Please describe all existing and additional lighting at the site. Are there specific hours of operation? Are there specific days of operation? Would you be willing to limit the days and hours of operation? For example, no weekends. What months do you run the sawmill? Where do you get your timber supply from and how is it delivered? Do you mail green lumber for clients or is it only for your personal use? And what can you do with the sawdust? If the commission approves the sawmill, a conclusion would be that the existing setbacks are adequate since the mill is portable and not a permanent structure. The commission may determine that it should go on to the Board of County Commissioners for a variance approval. For the record, I have received no complaints, but notice because I was shown in an advertisement on social media. That's how this whole thing started. Mm -hmm. Did receive a comment from a neighbor that they were opposed. I asked that they submit their comments and or concerns. Conditions of approval are as follows. One, the application, the staff report, and the provisions of land use and development ordinance are all made a part of the permit as I've written a full herein. Two, any change in the nature or scope of land use activity should require an additional conditional use permit. Three, these should be established within one year of the date of approval or this permit should be null and void. Four, the issuance of this permit and these conditions will not relieve the applicant from complying with applicable county, state, or federal laws or regulations or be construed as permission to operate in violation of any statute or regulation. Violation of these laws, regulations, or rule, make, rule make grounds for revocation of the conditional use permit or grounds for suspension of the conditional use permit. Lighting must comply with the Valley County Lighting Ordinance. All exterior lights should be fully shielded so that there is no upward or horizontal projection of lights. The lights can only be a maximum of 20 feet in height. Six, the applicant shall provide, maintain, orderly and proper disposal of waste including byproducts of the operation, other solid waste, and sanitary waste. Seven, must comply with Central District Health requirements. Eight, must uh, comply with requirements of Cascade Fire District. Nine, new structures, including fencing greater than six feet tall, must have building permits and be approved as part of the conditional use permit. 
10, the site must be kept neat and orderly. 11, Shelton is signed permit prior to installation of a sign advertising the sawmill or business. 12, the use shall not be expanded beyond the existing footprint. 13, the conditional use permit is not transferable to another owner. And 14, hours of operation are limited to um, discussion and days of operation. Um, because my recommendation is that if you limit those hours of operation and days of operation, that would uh, mitigate a lot of the impact. And then the neighbors would know exactly when it was going to be operating. You, know, you don't want it operating every Saturday and Sunday when people are trying to enjoy their time. So that's just a, a staff recommendation. Um, this is the map that I referred to, which shows in the orange, uh, Mr. Chapman's property, and then the yellow are the ones that come in in favor. So they are, you know, relatively close properties mm -hmm. to his. And then since the staff report was completed, we received additional correspondence, and you had those letters given to you prior to this meeting. One is from Michael Pluto, and they own property within 300 feet. They have concerns about the operation of the commercial sawmill that is fundamentally incompatible with a residential neighborhood. Um, he supports the efforts that stated within the context of the application, but does not support an unconditional approval. Um, the greatest risk could happen after the business or property is sold at some point in the future um, if you use the commercial, commercial sawmill with any residential areas granted without restrictions. Um, And then he has, you know, the applicant has presented this proposed sawmill is intended to be a part-time retirement hobby, which generates less than three thousand um, dollars. The business shall have no on-site employees except the owner. Um, therefore, only the vehicles of the owner should be parked at the property, except for delivery of logs and pickup of finished material. That would be a difficult one because how would we? determine if it was just friends stopping by or family stopping by. Um, no more than one delivery of logs and one pickup of finished materials per week. The sawmill should not have a motor with power greater than 10 horsepower. She'll be open or operate only on weekdays between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. And she'll not operate on Saturday, Sunday or on federal or state holidays. Um, so not operate more than four hours per day or up to five days. And there's really no exterior sawmill related lighting installed on the property beyond what exists on September 10th of 2020. And then Tim O'Leary presented a letter received yesterday. Um, and he supports this application. He owns the property at 69 East Prospector Drive. He's within 400 feet. He's been acquainted with Mr. Chapman for many years. It's a very small operating operation. It's gas powered, muffled, hand, -operated, hand operated bandsaw type sawmill on fixed roads. It's a very necessary part of our economic development in Valley County. He would be able to mill small amounts of logs for residents, providing them with service that is currently scarce or non existent in the community. He's already, the African has already stated there would be no large truck traffic. It's a very small and necessary to the Valley County community. Uh, and that ends my staff report. Thank you, Cinda. Yeah, thank you. Is there any questions of staff? Well, no, I don't. I've got one question that I've been, I've been trying to, since I've read that, and you classified it heavy industrial use. And for such a small operation, why do we categorize that heavy industrial use? When I think of heavy industrial use, I think of like a Boise Cascade sawmill, an Olson pit, pressure. This, in my mind, would be light industrial use. Because there's no... Uh, staff is confined to what's actually written there. The Planning Zoning Commission has more leeway in um, looking at the the use and determining which category it actually should fit in. You know, the same with the, the changing of the matrix numbers. 
I'm confined to, to what it actually says. I don't make those okay. arbitrary um, or subjective decisions as readily as the Planning and Zoning Commission can. Well, that answers my question then. Yeah. Thank you. And I had the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so. So there's, there's really right. no set definition is there a list that there's a list, isn't there, in the code that that determines what is? Yeah, what where is the line drawn between light commercial, heavy commercial, light industrial, right? Heavy industrial. I mean, there's there's not much of a line there that I'm aware of. That. Well, in Table Three A, land use classifications, it, it's that table that you know you regularly look at to to find out what it should be classified as. Um, but there is a note that is at the end of that that says the above listing is intended to serve as an aid to identify permitted and conditional uses. More detailed information about the specific use and the standards and procedures related there too may be found under the various um, chapters. So based upon the specific application, it's my opinion that the Planning and Zoning Commission can determine that it better fits into a different category. Um, for example, this use might be categorized under light industrial because it's enclosed manufacturing. It could also be some sort of commercial use because there's very little milling, actually. He just mills some stuff, and then he takes that lumber and creates things, you know, things that he sells, you know, commercially. Um, so is it truly a sawmill where, you know, logs are milled every day? Or is it That's a, what he's going to tell you. Or is that a recreational hobby? Right. Right. You know, where he sells, he says up to maybe $3,000 a year. But you guys have the ability to, to ferret out that information and then mitigate impacts. Okay. 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 Well, that, that clarifies my question. And that's why um, the, the previous one yeah, that's, for Will Smith was approved. Mm -hmm. So did they change the classification to a light industrial, or they just they approved just... it with um, conditions, Got it. mitigated impacts? Okay. Oh, okay. They didn't necessarily, you know, say. But you know, this one is much lighter than that one was. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm familiar with Will Smith's yeah. operation. Yeah. Paul Timbers, yeah. This one is is nothing compared to that. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I don't. I have none. Right. right at this time, we would hear a presentation from the applicant. Hi, I'm Mike Chapman. Uh, I started this little operation a couple of years ago, like Mr. Cooper said. Uh, you know, it's a little Toys R Us sawmill. It's not production. You, it takes a while to cut up a log. And, you know, I, and I like to make furniture, and I like to make dumb stuff, you know, birdhouses and whatever, and, you know, sell them to friends. And, and I try to keep my price low that so that guys like me can afford it and have something nice versus you see, you know, a log bench and they want $600 for it. I'll sell it for $200 because I want to help my friends out and people that can afford it and have some nice stuff. And that's kind of my goal in life since I've retired. I don't need to make a whole lot of money. I just want to have fun. And, and that's all this is, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm not against the neighbor out in gold dust. Everybody, there's, there's trees all over. The neighbor comes to me and says, Hey, can you mill up some stuff so I can build a chicken coop? I would gladly help the guy out. You know, it's not a whole lot of lumber. I don't want to, I don't want to work that hard. Anymore. <laughs> I've done that all my life. So, you know, I just want to play and have a, a small, just a small operation. And, and that's kind of what I was doing while I was still working, but I only had the weekends to do it. So when I retired and, and started doing this, I thought, let's expand this a little bit because there's room there. And, and, and I didn't mean to get busted. I started Chappie Sawmill, put myself on Facebook, you know, all of that. I was proud, you know, my daughter even made me some shirts, <laughs> you know, and and I and, and and I said, well, this is cool, you know. I can be somebody, you know. I don't mean it quite like that, but you know, a little pride in what I do and, and and whatnot. And 
And that's all that I'm really trying to do with this. I'm not out to make a killing or anything. And I sure don't want to. Uh, the one guy that disagreed with the sawmill, we had a talk. And he said, well, I just don't want this to grow into something like Sensi. And I looked at him and I says, I'm old. <laughs> it ain't going to grow into Sensi. And I said, besides that, I only got a little bit of ground here. I can't get very big and I don't want to get big. So enough of the, enough of that. Is there was a couple of questions here, and I'd like to answer them. Uh, the, the lighting. I got one yard light that sits off 90 degrees. It doesn't even light on the sawmill. It lights up my yard where my park and stuff. And, and I got the, and that's there just mainly for when it starts snowing, and I got to plow at night and clean the yard. I can see what I'm doing. And and uh, specific hours of operation. You know, since this has started up, I was doing it on the weekends. But it really wasn't a big deal because there's 50 chainsaws going on at every other neighborhood. And, and that saw is nice and quiet. and You don't really even hear it. But that uh, no problem. I have no problem with not working, running that thing on, run on the weekends. And and a lot of times it won't run two to three days a week, maybe. And that's just in the summertime. And. I don't like to mill much more than four or five hours. It's a lot of work, especially with that little mill. Everything's by hand and, you know, don't just throw logs around and by hand all day long, at least not at my age. So, you know, and, and then it doesn't work all the time. I, you know, if I can get a hold of a, a nice erotic woods, uh, black walnuts or something like that, I'll carve them up and then they go into the shop and, and I'll build furniture, coffee tables, benches, etc. So it's relatively quiet and, and the sawmill won't run a whole lot. So gladly, no weekends and, and four or five hours a day. Maybe it might run one month out of the whole year if you was to pack in all the days. And let's see. It, it's, it's asking here where I get my timber. A lot of it is from uh, private private landowners out here, whatever. They'll, I'll get a tree. Carol McGregor gave me quite a few trees last year. And I got some black walnut that I got from friends in Boise. And I got people looking out for any kind of logs like that. And other than, like say, I'm not into big production, so just looking for neat looking wood and make stuff. Uh, what do I do with the sawdust? At first I was letting it build up. So I kind of had a flat spot to work because my, my, my mill's on a hill like this. So, and the log rolled down and then the other side was, it was like that. So I let the sawdust build up, but now I got plenty there and it, you know, something to walk on and so now I catch it and put it in feed sacks and I sell it I have chickens my neighbors have chickens so I sell them a bag for a dollar and just fill it and catch it and put it in feed sacks other than that I don't know any more to say other than I hope you approve this I can have me a little business going on thank you thank you <laughs> is there any questions I don't have any questions no. As far as your slab wood and stuff, I mean, oh, the the the, the, the tailings, and right? Stuff, how do you dispose oh, of that? Um, I pile it right there by kind of by the road, you know, on my property, but kind of by the road, and mm -hmm. and, and and you can drive up there. There's a uh, a couple of retired couples out there that come and get it. I give it to them. They need it for firewood. They can't go out and do it. And I say, please, come. It's here. Please take it. You're doing me a favor and I'm doing you a favor. And typically when you bring in a log, I mean, it's just a single log. I looked at a picture. Oh, there's a couple of pictures, yeah. That, yeah, that showed that, I can't remember what you called it or what it was called, but you don't expect, well, it's a log dog. I guess. Oh, the log dog? Is that what you bring your logs in on? Or? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah, I, I built that so I could go pick up a log and and, and bring it home. But I got a dump trailer, oh. and, and I built me a little deal, a hook on it, and I got a winch, and I can load up. I can 
probably two and a half cords worth of logs. If you were to think of it in a firewood thing, I board feed. I don't, I ain't got that calculated, but, and, and then I just bring it and I dump right there to the side of the mill. And then you can see that little hoist thing I got. Mm -hmm. I roll them down there and then I pick them up with the hoist and swing it around and set it on the mill and use that to turn the log, especially the big ones. Cause well, it's curious as far as that, what's the lift capacity of that? What's that? That, what, that, that hoist? That hoist, yeah. I have no clue. I built it years ago. And so far it's worked. So far it's done just fine. It, well, and, and I don't try, you can't hardly turn it. So you got to have the logs close, really close to the pole. Mm -hmm. So the weight's pretty much straight down right there. there and then when you swing it around and get square with the mill, and then I got a little stopper up there that I turn loose and just slide it out over the mill and then let it down. So it's really not out there picking up logs. Well, I, would, I was more curious after looking at some of these pictures. And I go, oh, that must be a pretty good hoist on that. So, oh, it's pretty just, strong. Just but, curious. but, the, but it, you know, if the log's sitting way out on the end, you can't turn it because they just got it on some like little spindle like thing. And it gets that weights there then. Now it's in a bind and you can't turn it. You got to get it right next to the pole to spin it around and then take it out to where you're going to go. Well, I have no further questions to the applicant. Thank you. Um, sorry to make you keep going back and forth. Uh, I'm going to ask Cinda a question that I'm going to ask you. Are typical hours of operation for commercial uses is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Yes. Is that correct? So we would be limiting it further than that, potentially. Yes. So what, if you were to establish what you think your set hours of operation and days of operation would be, what would you, what would you set it as? Oh, let's say from 8 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon. That way, it gives me a little leeway if somebody shows up once a while, cut at one o'clock. Yep. I got time to do it, and, and I'm not offending anybody. Or anything. And then, how about days of the week? That's just go Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. And then, what about holidays? Oh, no. No, no holidays? No. No? Yeah, okay. We just won't do it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that answers that question. Um, then let's see here. So this conditional use permit based on the conditions of approval would not be transferred to the next owner of the property if this property were to ever sell. No. Okay. Um, which is not typically the I case. think there was a nice yes. non-transferable. Yeah, I saw that in there. Mm -hmm. So could I ask a question with that, please? Yep. If I will that piece of property to my son does he lose it yes he would lose it because it because it transfers yes have, uh, yeah so he would have to come in and do this process again right but i yeah. doubt he's ever going to want to do what i'm doing you know but he, no. would, he, he would love to have a sawmill there for his own hobby and, and do whatever his own thing but he's he's that's not his question. at least not today and, <laughs> okay. Um, you feel like everything was adequately answered? Any other questions? No, I believe everything was adequately answered. And I'm looking at, look, at we're reviewing his uh, photos he has here and the voice and where the positioning is. Looks good to me. Um, you know, where it's in relationship to where his house is at. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that would send off a bell in my head. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, take public comment then. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone here? Well, I'm just going to make a note. There's no one in the audience besides the applicant, so I'll only be addressing the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak in support of this application as a proponent? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Okay, go ahead. If you could please state your name and address for the record. My name is Michael Pluto, and my home address is 9480 West Hill State Drive in Star, Idaho. And I'm the property owner that sent in the comments about, about the commercial sawmill and being in a residential neighborhood. 
And I talked with Mike about this. I talked with Tim O'Leary about this. And what I would like to see is that the conditional use permit be granted, but with just the conditions listed that he put in the application so that there's no question down the road of the business growing and maybe a few employees and maybe a little bit more logging trucks or maybe it's it sold down the road to someone else who doesn't necessarily know what was in the application and has very different ideas on what the sawmill operation should be about. Um, Mike makes great benches and he's good people and I don't have any problems with what he's doing now, which is uh, no employees, a small sawmill, less than 10 horsepower, an operation maybe four hours a day during the week, weekdays, but not holidays. Um, and I just wanted to codify that stuff so that um, if he does get successful, maybe he finds a, a location that's, that's much better for a larger business. And if the conditional use permit is not transferable, that addresses almost all of my concerns. Thank you very much, Mr. Pluto. Is there anyone else on the phone who wishes to testify as a proponent, as undecided, or as opposed? All right, hearing none. Um, you need to hear rebuttal from the applicant. We'll give you a chance to address his comments if you'd like. Um, okay. All righty, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it to the table for discussion. Well, the first thing I would like to say is to consider light industrial instead of heavy. I don't think it, it fits heavy industrial use. I agree. Yeah. I agree too. I think maybe I picked up on one other thing based on the testimony. Maybe we put a condition of approval in there that says no employees. Um, and if, if they grow to that size, then maybe it's time to look for a different place. Yeah, I put Monday through Friday, no holidays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., not to exceed four hours per day. Okay. And then there's going to be no employees. Well, I have a question on that. Yes. The, I disagree with that part. Um, eight five is fine. I think that's what you said, Cindy. Yes. The uh, so I will not operate more than four hours per day. I mean, eight to five. Yeah, Chappie won't run the thing the whole time, but still, that's limiting his ability to run his okay. solid. I'll take that off. I'll take that last part off. Just the last part of it, I just realized that's part of his business. Just the eight to five operational period, five days a week. Yeah. Yes. For me, yeah, okay. Anything else I'll do with it? Yeah, and since we're considering this light industrial rather than heavy, we don't need to request a variance from the county commissioners. Um, I, he's well within the setbacks according to the site plan. Change it to portable mill. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's no permanent structure. Permanent structure there. Yeah. And it looks, what I see, it's just more of a recreational hobby that he has, and occasionally he does some dimensional lumber for a neighbor or something. It's not a not a big operation. Yeah. More fun than plumbing. It's more fun than plumbing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, I would entertain a motion if there's no more discussion. I'll entertain a motion that we approve conditional use application number 20 22, Chappie Sawmill and Woodworks with so listed and stated conditions of approval. I mean, I will second that motion. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There is a 10 day appeal period with the Board of County Commissioners if you do not like our decision. I'd like to reply. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and, and for Mr. Pluto on the phone, um, just to make sure you know that what one of the conditions was that it's not transferable. Yep, if you're still listening. Yeah. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for calling in. All righty. Right. Have everybody. a good night. Okay. Thank you very much. See you. The uh, next item on the agenda is under other uh, common area improvements on RP 16 N 03 E 27 four, six, five, six mm -hmm. owned by wagon wheel ranch recreation corporation. And this is an action item. Well, it's more of a, just wanted to let you know, someone had called in. Um, there was a planted common area in the wagon wheel ranch subdivision, mm -hmm. um, that is being cleared out for recreation purposes. Um, I really don't have anything to do with common areas and they put up the sign. You know, I'm just letting you know. I don't know if you feel like these things would need a conditional use permit. Yeah. I mean, I just wanted to let you know. I think people are riding, you know, bikes, motorcycles, walking, running dogs, that kind of thing. I think that's what a common area is for. Um, but the creation of the parking lot, I don't know. It's up to you guys. If you think. It would require well, they, I don't even know who to contact. They really need a place to park if they're going to right. enjoy that. If they do have lake access, it's, I looked at that. There's right. no lake access. It's just a meadow. Just, just a meadow. You're it's right. I see a picnic here. table back there. Well, and I think of other subdivisions with common areas, like in the meadows. There's, there's that playground right in the middle, and there's, I don't know, a dozen parking spots right off to the side, which was probably in the subdivision plat. Who knows what? I guess we'd have to look at the plot of this to see if there's anything planned. Mm. I don't see it as like, they're not trying to run a commercial operation. They're not charging people to come in. They're not proposing it as an event venue. Well, and it is only for those people that are owners in Wagon Wheel Bay subdivision. It's not like for the general public. Yeah. But, you know, reading the signs, and the only concern I have is that big slash plot. <laughs> But I'm sure they'll take care of that. <laughs> Hopefully in the winter. Yeah. Uh, with about a foot of snow on it. All right. Got a lot of dirt in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so would you like us to... How would you like this action to sound? Do we need no a, action needed? No action needed. Do we need a vote on no action needed? No. We just wanted input from us as far as it... Yeah, if you decided that something was needed, then you yeah. have the ability to make a motion because yeah. you listed it as an action item. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any other discussion on that? I don't have any. We will take no action. All right. That's been decided. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a planning and zoning discussion on zoning. Yeah. Cinda. Well, it has come up in conversation direction um, that we need to take a look at how Valley County is zoned, how we do our short-term and long-term planning. Um, and so anything to do with the comprehensive plan, land use ordinance starts with the Planning and Zoning Commission. And then you go through public hearings and you make recommendations to the board of county commissioners. Um, some of the you know topics that are brought up by you know the general public or, or different people is we need to zone Valley County. We need to zone Valley County so that we know what to expect next door when we buy a piece of property or when we want to buy a piece of property, we know you know what we can do with it. You know, traditionally, right now, we have the performance-based planning, which requires a conditional use permit for everything that isn't just a single-family residence mm -hmm. um, or an agricultural use, which, you know, gives more flexibility. And it all, you know, in where land uses are located, but it also gives us more control over anything except a single-family residence. I mean, stop me if you're not following. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, you know, that's the way our ordinance was set up back in 1982 when we first, you know, started going through land use applications. Um, so, 
you know, I know that I have asked you to think about, you know, the future of Valley County, the future of planning in Valley County. And the question is, do you think or want to amend our comprehensive plan? Do you think our comprehensive plan is adequate? Do you think our comprehensive plan sets us up to perhaps do some zoning or zone the entire county? So it needs to be a discussion of the Planning and Zoning Commission of how you want to proceed. I think one thing that has been thrown out there is we could do some sort of hybrid zoning. You know, start with, you know, keep everything multiple use, but then come in and zone specific areas. For example, carefree subdivision. Mm -hmm. Zone it R1. Of course, we'd have to make up an R1 zone. Blackhawk subdivisions. Those ones that have established CCNRs that say nothing except single family residential use. You know, and just start picking those spots that are well established single family residential use. The only issue, I mean, and then if somebody wanted to do a business, they would have to come in instead of getting a conditional use permit, then they'd have to amend the zone and then get a conditional use permit. I mean, there's always a way around that. So does the conditional use permit process work? Or should we go to something a little more solid like a single family residential zone? Another zone that potential um, is, and it's identified in our comprehensive plan, are the commercial hubs such as Lake Park. Mm -hmm. Do we just pre-zone that commercial industrial? But if you do that, you get rid of your control and then you have to write specific standards that have to be followed for design guidelines or stringent landscaping, things that will control the way that is looked and developed. You know, lot coverage, setbacks, um, percentages of landscaping. So it gets a lot more intense as far as just administrative processing versus coming to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Am, am I talking in circles yet? No, I don't know. I kind of understand where you're coming from, but that, I can see where that could, um, there's going to be a lot of logistics in laying out a map of where R1 is going to be, where B, B1 is going to be, where B2 is going to be, C1, C2, and so forth. And from my background from San Antonio, Texas, I was also planning zoning down there. And that is all that. I mean, that was, that's how it's done. The population of that city is about 2.2 million. And uh, you're not going to open up a business in a, in a R1 neighborhood. That's just not going to happen. You have to go to a B1, depending on the type of business you have, or B2, B3, and so forth. So it's all progressive. So that, I mean, your idea, I think, is really a good idea. Uh, but I think, I think it's going to require a lot of minds to, uh, Strategically lay that out in a you know in a manner that um, that will make sense, and I'm sure there will still be people who will come back to us and say, "Why did you do that?" You know, I've had my hairdressing business in Carefree now for 15 years, and you're basically putting me out of business. And uh, so, I mean, it is. It's, it's a logical thing, and that came up at one of our other deals here this last year that became a big brouhaha, mm -hmm. uh, just like that uh, that point uh, um, that's tire of uh, Verniel House. I mean, that should have never been allowed to happen, uh, and that was in Carefree, and uh, the way that operation was going with the weddings and the tents and the dumpsters, I mean, and... Had that been on the books as an R1 in Carefree, that could have never happened. So, um, <coughs> but it happened. It happened for what, what do you say? He ran that thing for four years and never thought he had a problem. And then all of a sudden he's got a problem. You know, it's like, really? You were asleep all that time? You didn't realize you were disturbing your neighbors? Oh, is that the one up on Knob Hill? Yeah. 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 Hill. yeah. That was outside of Carefree. That's right. why we did the. the no, it's, in, it's, it's not either. Yeah. It is Knob Hill. It's part of Carefree subdivision. 
Well, it's adjacent to it, but it's not a whole subdivision. No, but it's, it's carefree's all broken up. We're in, we're in eight, uh, uh, two blocks over from me, that's seven. So there's like different sections of carefree out there. So, you know. So do you think, and I'm just, you know, playing devil's advocate and, and throwing things out there. Do you think that would limit people's home-based businesses? I mean, are we? Well, that, that's the point. I, you know, I read through that and I've lived in Valley County for 51 years. And this issue should have been addressed at least 30 years ago. Oh, yeah, you're right. If they wanted to zone. But 30 years ago, we didn't know we were going to see such tremendous growth in this valley. So I think we have to have this multiple use. We might be able to identify some areas like East Lake Fork that, you know, that's kind of where we want this industrial use at. But then, you know, I personally, I think we're a little bit behind the power curve on it as far as going in and establishing big zones. Because there is such a mix out there right now. Yeah. That's, my, that's kind of my point. It could take us some great minds to map this whole thing out if we wanted to approach this. And, do and no this. matter how we map it out or who maps it out, it's going to make somebody mad. When oh, of course. Oh, know, yeah. You know, no question about unless we stay within that zoning, then if there already is, like your hair business or whatever it is, it's grandfathered in, well, it, it unless it changes hands. Yeah, you'd have yeah. to grandfather it in. So, so like, why create more headaches for us down the road? Like I say, it should have been addressed oh, yeah. 20, no, 30 years ago, but right. nobody then realized what was going to happen to Valley County right. or the state of Idaho. Right. Oh, and that became, this exact topic became an issue when we approved the storage unit for mm -hmm. Dusty Benton there off of Pearson uh, um, Lane. Yeah. Yeah. So and even, that's though, even was... though he addressed it with the berms and the entryway and the exit, and then he had since moved his entryway and exit down the street mm -hmm. further uh, to get that off of Pearson Lane. But, you well, know, again, that, you yeah, know. Most of the people's comments during that, they were afraid of the encroachment of industrial type. Sure. Use okay, we gave to him, and maybe somebody else will want it, but then it was up to us to Stop. deny, yeah. And we did, and we did deny that one. Well, we denied, we denied the uh, the big uh, wedding two. venue deal, yeah, with the rock music and the uh, outdoor amphitheater and all that, yeah, in that neighborhood. So, yeah, so. I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a tough, it's a it conundrum. Yeah. This, this is our beginning conversation. We aren't going to solve it tonight. Right. This is to stimulate your mind. Well, it, it, my mind has been <laughs> stimulated <laughs> since I read about that. So what would happen, say we zoned Lake Fork as commercial industrial, what happens to the houses that are inside? They're not important. Just non conform And so they would stay that way in perpetuity until they've sold or until they use the thing. It doesn't go with ownership. Okay. I mean, if it's a non conforming use, it's a non conforming use until that use is changed. Mm -hmm. Does that stay the same for all of the small businesses that are operating within residential areas that we would zone? Those established single family areas, you know, like mm -hmm. Black Hawk, Jeff Bowden, um, anything that had already been established in there would be a non conforming use. Okay. I mean, I see, I see both sides of the argument, and I think that it is a huge feat to take on, especially oh, yeah. for a small volunteer council. Um, and I see, like, ah, oh, we're kind of behind the curveball on this, but, or the eight ball, whatever, we're, mm -hmm. we're behind on getting it done. But at the same time, we don't want to just sweep it under the rug and think that maybe the problem will go away if we don't address it. So I see both sides of it. I also think that the conditional use permit process is the reason it solves all of the problems. And if you propose a conditional use permit that is adi that adequately addresses any potential concerns that neighbors have, it's passed and it's a it's a good operation in a neighborhood. You can't make everyone happy all the time. Mm. So I don't know. I see well, both sides. It's kind of like Chappie Sawmill thing. It's right in the middle of a, of a subdivision. And it's 
his own residential, but. And I think it's a great fit. It's a great fit. For our for rural community. So that's yeah. why I'm afraid that if we, we would establish too many of these zones, like you say, those that had businesses in those zones would be, uh, in other words, grandfathered into right. it until they sold. But we would potentially restrict future, future growth. Future, right, to have some little. Or the other way we could approach it gradually, and this might not work either, but uh, take Black Hawk on the lake mm -hmm. subdivision. It's gated. Uh, you are not going to open up hairdressing business in that community. Uh, your next door neighbor will call, call on you immediately to shut that thing down. It's not going to happen. Okay. And uh, start with that subdivision, call that one an R1. And you, you know nothing else is going to go in there other than single family homes and the amount of covenants and conditions and restrictions they have on building a home in there is unbelievable. I mean, it's like six pages of stuff. Okay. And yeah, and you got you got to conform with your colors, you got to conform with your shingles, oh, yeah. you got to yeah. conform so with everything. And so when it's all said and done. Well, even so, some of that falls into the the covenances of the subdivisions too, because some state no oh, sure. no businesses. Yeah. We did run across that one here. Yeah, recently. yeah, one to the mountain. I don't remember which one that was, yeah. but that uh, was just recent. Yeah. Oh, so that was the other wedding venue. That was the other <laughs> wedding venue. So there are, well, you know, rules out there that when you buy into a subdivision and they have CCNRs and homeowners association and a board, you know, the board deals with it. We don't deal with that. No, either. sure, no, we, and we should never even approach that. I mean, but my the feeling homeowner is homeowner association should. That's that their deal. That's we have an applicant come in for a conditional use permit, and we know he's in violation of those CCNRs. I don't think it's up to us to approve it. Yeah, and we just had that happen. And there was that it. other wedding venue that yeah. got, and we shut down. So it, there's a secondary layer of protection where if, subdivisions if you want to live in a subdivision and you want to be involved in the HOA, and there's an active uh, board that has CCNRs that are well enforced, mm -hmm. you're not going to have a commercial operation pop up next door that's going to be. They intrusive. may try to. They may try, but there's grounds for them to be sued in civil courts. So that's right. Make it's it go away. Matter. And, you know, I think about places like big cities that have zoning and for a purpose, right? Like if you're living in a subdivision, you don't want, you know, a big. Sawmill. Commercial, yeah, sawmill <laughs> right next door because you yeah. live in a city. Same. But we are Valley County and we appreciate things like sawmills mm -hmm. and we appreciate home businesses and we want to keep the rural nature of our county, which doesn't pigeonhole us into a box of saying, well, you can only have commercial here and you can only have residential here. That's, we That was my biggest concern, yeah. Johanna. And if they, like I said, if they did it 25, 30 years ago, say East Lake Fork, these geographical boundaries, mm -hmm. that's industrial and then some other industrial. And this is all residential and agricultural or whatever. Yeah. But like I said, you could foresee what was going to happen up here. Well, and maybe we didn't want it to be that way. And so that's, or the people who were here before us didn't want it to be that way. Didn't want that kind of control. No. There because maybe they wanted less, less regulations, yeah. less control, yeah. which people like, yeah. some people like. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing it does do is it makes our job easier. If you do have like residential zoning and different things, it makes our job a lot easier. But it also takes away the, that piece of Say Neil wants to set up his electrical business in that residential area. Yeah, yeah I just drive it out there with my truck. Kind of my concern. Yeah, there's is a lot of concern would... with that because I'm in the construction industry. I'm mm -hmm. with all these guys. Yeah, they and can't they all work out of their houses. Right, they can't necessarily afford to have an office well, space yeah. in town, and we don't we don't None want them to. You can. No, and most of the guys up here, electricians, plumbers, they're all one horse shops. Yeah, very few have. Multiple employees, mm -hmm. very few, and it's it would be tough. Um, the only thing it puts on our shoulders is that as this area grows, we're going to have a whole lot more of this in mm -hmm. front of us. Oh yeah, to make decisions on. 
Well, and there'll be a lot more opposition to a lot of things that people want to propose too. And I've only been here three years. And I think this year is probably seeing, I've seen more opposition on some of this stuff than I've I did my first couple of years. Yeah, more opposition and more appeals. More appeals, and I'm kind of, in my own mind, established some geographical areas where right. those Just things will people come up. In with this concept that this is my residential area, and now this is encroaching into it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Because we're seeing farm ground disappear into residential. Well, yeah. Look what's happened in Boise Valley. Absolutely. You know, I grew up on Morse Creek and <laughs> oh, God. oh I... <laughs> nothing's the same anymore. <laughs> it's not the same. So, I, you know, really, I don't know what, the, I kind of like the way it works right now. Right. I agree with you. I wonder, are we in a spot where we want to make this decision tonight or should we do some no. research, make some I think what Cinder was really trying to do is just plan an idea. I, I, I just want you to think about that. And then we'll think about how to proceed. Okay. I might come in with some examples. Yeah, I would be curious to um, know how all the other counties in Idaho, all of them, how most of the, the traditional Euclidean zoning. Okay. We don't want to leave that wheel. Um, That's something I, I'm strongly believe in. It's not really the wheel. Right. You know, when we tried to make, you know, changes, you know, like our two acre averages, it's like we just go back to where we were. Because it just fits better. Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But we might be able to help that process a little bit. Well, that's what, you know, maybe we think of overlays. You know, like your Title Nine, Chapter 5. Title Nine, ouch. Chapter says something like that, where you have we have floodplain overlays, we have mm -hmm. the roseberry overlay, which better defines what can go in those areas, but it's not a hard fast thing. It's not restrictive. It it restricts some things. Okay, mm -hmm. but we might do like a R one overlay, which would say no heavy industrial uses, no you know and eliminate some uses that you just cannot have, but it wouldn't eliminate those entrepreneurial type activities where you're a one-man shop and you have a dump truck sitting by your house and you take it out every morning. Okay, so say let's say there's these overlays that eliminate like heavy industrial uses and then we have a knife river that comes in and wants to propose the asphalt plant in the spot that is not within that overlay. What they would just come and and have a conditional use permit application and go through the hearing process anyway, or would it be like, you can't even apply? No, oh, everybody has the right to apply for anything they want. Mm -hmm. It's so probably it's, not likely you're going to get approval. Yeah, but it's but kind of the same as before. Some of those spots. And I think that's why I'm saying we need to do maybe a uh, heavy industrial overlay, like in the Good Lane area. Well, where all the gravel pits are, that's probably where the asphalt and concrete plants should go. Well, but that was, there was a proposal to have one there, but then it was denied because no. it wasn't a good fit. No, it was no. not. Yeah. So. It was that one. Uh-huh. It was withdrawn by the applicant because they didn't comply with setbacks. Oh. Because they were trying to put it on a little tiny spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't denied. In fact, it was approved by the PNZ Commission, appealed to the board, and then withdrawn because there was an error on the survey and the setbacks weren't met. Oh. So it was a, a technical glitch. Yeah. So just some things to think about. Food for thought. And so then the other thing I want you to think about um, is the seat byway. Mm -hmm. There are proposed landscaping requirements along scenic byways, you know, that have been written up, you know, nationally, uh, regionally. Um, and I want to know if you want to entertain and think about maybe some an scenic overlay landscaping zone, you know, that looks at the type of structure, the height of the structure, requires additional landscaping. Previous planning and zoning commissions 
never really wanted to entertain that. And they don't want they didn't want the heavy berm landscaping because they want people to be able to see through. They don't want berms. They don't want to be that Sun Valley berm. Um, but I could bring, and I've got a copy of them. And I, I think I gave you a copy at one time just in your correspondence, but I'll give you another copy. It's something else to consider for that scenic overlay. Okay. That scenic byway. I know that a number of years ago we spent a whole bunch of money and came up with our thousand foot corridor and all of that stuff, and it was just flat out denied and people came in blue. But this would be a different type of approach with just additional landscaping for people doing things along that area. To try to preserve the beauty of the scenic corridor. Mm -hmm. And I'll get that to you. Just things to think about. Okay. Okay. All right, we will continue to think. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, think we know people think about stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, outside well, of here. Yeah, I think it's important. It's the thing is, is it's been brought up a lot, especially mm -hmm. surrounding the election that's coming up. It's a, a hot topic, and we need to oh, have it at the front of our minds. Because what are you talking about? Seeing my thing? No, the zoning. Oh, yeah. Land use planning always, is always a very hot topic in elections. And, and then it, it dies down. But I say that we address it, and maybe this winter we can have maybe some special meetings. I'd have to have the input from multiple people. So yeah, we could have an open house. And get input from, from people. I mean, I've started throwing this out there, and I've gotten letters from people, mm -hmm. you know, already. You know, they like it the way it is. Don't change it. I mean, so maybe we have an open house and see what people think. Have different types of, of tools, you know, to present and see what people like. Mm -hmm. I personally don't think we need to change our comp plan. I think it... Um, lays out in the implementation chapter, you know, these types of things. It set it sets it up. Mm -hmm. So anyway. then we can have special meetings and meet more often. And y'all can get virtually the mileage. I was gonna say, do we get paid more? <laughs> That's a mileage thing. You know, right. we have to pay, yeah. you know. I moved closer to this oh. place, so I my pay has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that I would like to say if we do these open houses, we need to invite the commissioners. Need what? Invite the commissioners to come and be part of the process as well. Well, if you want to meet with the commissioners, I think that would be fine. But the state statute clearly says that we are the ones. That it's the Planning and Zoning Commission making the recommendations to the board. If anyone has a public hearing, it's the planning and zoning commission. That's what you guys do. Okay. Um, but if you want to meet with the board and get their ideas prior to having this, but to exchange ideas and, and kind of what they're looking for, I mean, that would be fine. You want, we could get that maybe towards the end of October or November ish to have that joint meeting. Yeah. Well, I think that some of the recommendations are coming from the commissioner, so maybe it would be good for us to better understand what they're looking for. It's a legislative matter. Call them. Just don't call each other. Right. We can't talk about it with each other, but we can call them. Maybe that's a good thing. That'll help in our... It's legislative. It's about quasi-judicial. Yeah. That'll help in our continuing thinking on it. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because they, they quizzed me when they interviewed me. Yeah. They quizzed me pretty hard. I watched it. I, I saw that. <laughs> so I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> All right. It says FYI about Mr. Atkins. So, Samson Trail one. Oh. He just told me to you. Told me they just give it to them in their packets so they can look at it. Yeah, um, it was reported to me that he had some equipment outside of his house. It's a mini excavator and something mini. The picture's not here. But I determined that he is not a business. He says every once in a while he'll rent himself out to Kessler or somebody else, but he's retired. He does not have an excavation business. He has that equipment because he just. I mean, he said he, day two, people were already scoping him out of moving in. 
And um, he knew it was coming. So he's new on the street. He, he brought in uh, and has some equipment that he's going to work on his property with. And it's more of a, a hobby thing. It's not, he doesn't have it. Kind of like a sawmill. No, it's less than the sawmill. Less than a sawmill. Like he just owns equipment because he wants right. it. Right. <laughs> and once in a while, he might go do something for Tesla or something, but he doesn't contract with anybody. He just helps out. But he does not have a business. I said he does not have a business. Um, and I wasn't going to require a conditional use permit. If you don't feel the same way, please let me know. We'll watch and see what happens there. So the neighbors? Yes. Yeah, and the neighbors will report back to us. Where does he live at? 5, 15, 10 Sampson Trail. That's where he lives. Yeah, it's just north of Pearson on the west side of the road. But just west. south of the houses with the blue roofs. Yeah, I lived there for seven years okay. in the blue roofs. <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go. Right across from Elkin. Oh, I know where he moved in. Yeah. I know exactly where he moved in. He moved in that house with the blue roof? No, no, no. Just south. south. Oh. Just south of there. Oh, okay. He bought, uh, yeah, I know whose house he bought. I think it's one of the round pan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's just got some private stuff going on. As he starts making creepy, creepy. He said he has a dump truck, he hauls stuff, whatever. But I don't think he needs a conditional use permit. Okay. I agree. I'm just letting you know. And we may see more on it later. We may. Or maybe not. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the facts and conclusions. <clears throat> I would entertain a motion for all four of those. I move that uh, Chairperson DeFoot sign the facts and conclusions, CUP 2014, 2018, 2019, and 2020. And I'll second it. Right. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Action. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, meeting adjourned 734. Okay. Wow. New record. Oh, hold on. You're still on.